Thank you, Margarise. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Manuel Bahal Net. Uh, he is the director of institutional cooperation of the Brazilian National Council for Scientific and Technological Development. Dr. Bahal Neto received uh, his bachelor's and master's and doctorate degrees of medicine uh, from the Federal University of Bahia in Brazil, where he is a faculty member. He is a specialist in immunoparasitology, field in which he has made several extraordinary uh, contributions. He also participated in an advanced training in, in the U.S. at the Laboratory of Parasitic Diseases of the National Institute of Health, a center that conducts basic and applied research on the prevention, control, and treatment of a variety of parasitic and bacterial diseases of global importance, and also conducted postdoctoral research at the Seattle Biomedical Research Institute. During this time in the state of Washington, uh, he advanced our understanding on human immunolo Im immunology and published articles at Science and other uh, important journals that became uh, mandatory in, in this field. He leads uh, several research product, uh, projects funded by Brazilian and international agencies. Moreover, he has served on several advisory committees for Brazilian research agencies and international organizations such as the World Health uh, Organization. In addition, uh, Dr. Bahal Neto is a faculty member and a senior researcher at the Gonzalo Muniz Research Center at the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation, mostly known as Fio Cruz. The most prominent, prominent uh, science and technology health institution in Latin America, an institution that is linked to the Brazilian Ministry of Health. Uh, his uh, scientific production includes hundreds of full-length papers published in international journals. Uh, he was a president of the Brazilian Society for Immunol Immunology. Uh, he is a member of the Brazilian Academy of Sciences and was awarded the National Order of Scientific Merit. As I said previously, uh, he is currently the Director of Institutional Cooperation of CNPQ, PQ, uh, the agency linked to the Ministry of Science and Technology dedicated to foster scientific technological research and, uh, and training of Brazilian researchers. Uh, we are greatly honored to have Dr. Bahal Neto to present the Science and Border Without Borders program, an initiative of the Brazilian federal government aiming to invest over $1 billion in scholarships that will allow, allow over 10,000, 100, sorry, uh, 100,000, it's a huge number, 100,000 of Brazilian students primarily in uh, science, technology, engineering, and, and mathematics uh, fields to attend uh, uh, the world top universities. And uh, in this particular case of the Bay Area Institution, we hope that we'll be able to, to bring uh, some of those uh, talented Brazilians uh, to the area. Thank you very much, and let's welcome Dr. Bahal Neto. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Bahal Neto. I just want to quickly tell you that some of us are tweeting. Those of you who are on Twitter, we are tweeting under the hashtag BayBrazil. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. I would like uh, to thank you, the organizer, for the invitation to present this material and also to the ambassador that is uh, making a tremendous uh, job in uh, helping science and Brazilian science and technology here, besides uh, many other matters that he has to tackle. Uh, well, I uh, would like uh, to put in perspective some of uh, achievements, Brazilian achievements on uh, science and technology in, last, in the last years. And as you have uh, uh, been told by the uh, panel that preceded uh, this presentation, there was a big change in Brazil in the last uh, years, and this is also uh, present in science and technology. 
just to put in perspective, the uh, mm -hmm. people that... Excuse me, Mr. Bajal, it's not the yeah. Maybe it's that, uh, better now. Okay. No? Okay, no. <laughs> uh, so, just to put in perspective, uh, the amount of people that left poverty in Brazil in the last 10 years is about four, uh, 40 uh, million people. That is more than the whole population of Canada. <laughs> so, it, it's really a huge shift in terms of uh, changing in uh, everything in Brazil. But, of course, this puts a lot of pressure in the educational system and the need of uh, well-qualified uh, personnel. So, uh, Brazil is a latecomer in science and technology. There, was, uh, there is a small number of uh, uh, scientists and lack of institutional base for research up to the Second uh, World War. And uh, there was a very incipient industry and concentrated in traditional sectors. And the federal funding agencies uh, were created in 51 and uh, one that is related more to the industry only in the 70s. So graduate programs and full-time faculty positions were established only in the 60s, 1960s. So it's a time where Europe and uh, uh, the US were already uh, at full speed in, in terms of science and technology. So the, uh, it, it's really very recent, the institutional, of course, there, there were people doing science in Brazil before that, of course, but with not really a strong institutional support or uh, structured uh, funding. In the cases of success, I, I'm going to be very brief because the panel also addressed that in terms of uh, deep oil uh, drilling and uh, Embraer and agriculture and uh, the biofuels. These are really uh, 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 very important also for the society in Brazil to know the benefits that uh, science and technology can, can bring to the country. And uh, well, just uh, briefly about uh, CNPq itself, I mean, uh, what we do now is really to invest a lot on investigators. Of course, this is one point that um, as, uh, I'll show you a little bit uh, afterward, afterwards. We, Brazil lacks a lot uh, highly qualified personnel in science and technology. And also uh, several uh, for other levels, but we, uh, in, uh, in order really to bring attention for uh, young students to science, we really start uh, doing that in the undergraduates and even in a lower level in high school, attracting uh, students to uh, really uh, be get involved with science uh, initiatives and having uh, some period of time spent uh, in uh, research groups. And also, in terms of uh, another problem that Brazil uh, has, not only in the economy, but uh, that uh, reflects in science and technology, is uh, uh, not a very good balance, to say the least, between the regions. And uh, then uh, we have uh, programs that are really focused on, uh, uh, directed to areas, to regions that are not really uh, strong in, in science. And uh, this is one uh, also uh, recent uh, program, uh, three to four years ago, that was really to create national networks addressing uh, specific questions uh, involving different uh, regions of the country and uh, with a specific uh, mission to uh, not only advance uh, the knowledge but also to interact with the, uh, the uh, non-academic sectors, not only industry but uh, uh, other aspects of non-academic. Uh, these were uh, created uh, 122 institutes and now we have 126 because we added last year four institutes for ocean sciences. So these are not really physical institutes but uh, they congregate, congregate uh, uh, groups, research groups from several uh, institutions in Brazil to address uh, specific questions. So these are really one uh, uh, very interesting way to cooperate with Brazil now, the institutions abroad that would like to uh, focus on aspects, some aspects. These are really the way to go in Brazil because you have a contact with uh, very strong research teams from different institutions and in, uh, working together. Well, uh, giving you some numbers on uh, evolution of the scientific publications in Brazil, these are uh, um, uh, numbers from the UNESCO report from uh, um, uh, 2010. And what we see here is that the numbers of uh, internationally indexed uh, publications in Brazil increased uh, significantly. And uh, also the percentage of the Brazilian contribution to the whole production in science is increasing. The numbers in, uh, in the um, 
circles, the uh, blue circles, indicate the percentage of uh, the Brazilian contribution. So we are still below th uh, 3%, and uh, so we have lots of uh, 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 farther uh, work to do on that aspect. And of course, this uh, production was really the resultant of an investment in Brazil in terms of people. Uh, uh, increasing the numbers of uh, PhDs uh, granted in Brazil. The yellow line, or the, the green line below, is really the numbers of uh, PhDs granted in Brazil. And uh, we are now above uh, 12,000 uh, per year. And uh, this is a significant increase from previous year, but still not enough. And in terms of uh, the production in all areas of science, if you take uh, the uh, scientific indexed uh, publications, and this is uh, based on the Scopus database that is, is similar to the ISI, but uh, larger than ISI. And what we see here that Brazil in the 2010 were in the 13th position in terms of numbers of papers. Well, a uh, few years ago, we were much below that. We were uh, below the 20 position. So it was a big increase. But if we uh, think that we have now the 60 economy, uh, the 13th position is not uh, good enough. Normally, uh, economic power correlates with uh, scientific production. What uh, this really reinforces is that uh, the Brazilian economy is not really uh, based on knowledge. We, uh, the big increase of our economy was really uh, dealt with commodities that uh, do not really uh, require much of, uh, of uh, knowledge. So we have really to uh, take the, uh, the possibility of having the good situation of Brazilian economy now and invest a lot on science and technology and create really a knowledge society if we want to uh, maintain uh, the good economical situation uh, in Brazil. And um, of course, in some areas, Brazil is doing uh, much better than that in parasitology. Brazil is the third uh, um, uh, uh, country in terms of produ scientific production. And in the dentistry, uh, Brazil is the second uh, uh, production of uh, internationally indexed journals. In some areas, uh, in most of the areas, we are around the 6th to the 13th place. I mean, of course, in some areas, we are uh, very bad. But these are cases of success. And uh, I really don't understand much why we're doing that good in uh, dentistry. It's easy to understand in parasitology, but, <laughs> but I don't know really how to explain that in, in dentistry. And uh, so the effort of increasing people, uh, highly skilled people in Brazil, can be illustrated by these numbers of uh, science, uh, science and engineering indicators, also from 2010 from the NSF. And uh, what we see here is that uh, the whole population, uh, tertiary educated population in the world, increased between the 80s and the, and the 2000. So Brazil increased his population uh, in this uh, sector, but we are still only 2% of uh, the whole world. So because everybody is increasing. So our effort is important, but it's not enough. I mean, we really have to uh, expand farther if we want to really have an impact in that area. And uh, another number that is important to us here is uh, the, uh, uh, the numbers of researchers uh, per million inhabitants. And uh, what we see here is that uh, the position of Brazil, although increased from uh, 2002 to 2007, is, uh, is still below the world mean. If we compare with the developed countries, we are far below. So we, st we really have to uh, increase a lot the number of highly skilled people if we want to have uh, an impact on the economy. And another aspect that deserves our attention is the imbalance in some areas of uh, the science uh, effort. This is also from the UNESCO report of 2010. And uh, this is a comparison of Brazil with uh, some other uh, 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 countries of the uh, BRIC countries. Brazil, uh, the Russian Federation, uh, India, China, and Africa, South Africa. And what we see here is uh, compared with the other countries that have very large areas and lar very large population uh, that uh, constitutes these BRICS, what we see here is that Brazil is doing well in terms of biology, biomedical research, and clinical medicine, uh, where it's among uh, the, the leaders, uh, it's 
the leader in biology and uh, close to the others in, uh, in biomedical research and clinical medicine. But when we take chemistry, earth and space, engineering, and mathematics, and physics, Brazil is uh, the last of this group. So we have a clear imbalance on that. We have to focus a lot on engineering and the uh, STEM if we want uh, to change the picture of this in Brazil. And of course, we still have to invest a lot on biology and uh, biomedical, because otherwise, we are going to lose this position. I mean, if we don't uh, keep uh, going, the others are going to be uh, faster than us. And this is an also an important aspect. Uh, when we compare, here uh, the comparison is not brick, because China is uh, producing so much that the scale would be compressed. So this is only brie. <laughs> China is not in these, uh, in these uh, uh, panels. But what we see here is that Brazil is doing not very well in engineering. We are far below uh, the uh, development of India, that is in the uh, blue line. Brazil is the green line in the left panel, engineering. And the Russian Federation is not doing well, but uh, if you compare to India, and uh, like I said, to China, it's impossible to compare. They're much uh, higher than that. Brazil is not really increasing uh, its production in, in uh, engineering, but if we uh, take social sciences, Brazil is already the leader in uh, social science production. So this aspect is going well in terms of uh, local production. And uh, the, the same situation could be shown for, uh, for other aspects like chemistry or physics and, and so on. And this is another point that I would like to address here, is that uh, the uh, mobility of scientists among different countries. And uh, I'll take the, uh, the US that is in the far right, and uh, we see here that uh, uh, the, that that are not many um, uh, U.S. Uh, scientists working abroad. So the uh, lower part of the uh, of the graph, this, the gray area, you have not very many people from the U.S. working in the, in other countries. But uh, U.S. Is, uh, attracts a lot of people from other countries to come here. But if we take Brazil, that is the second from the left to the right, then we see that uh, our situation is not really of mobility. We don't have many people going abroad, and we don't attract many people to work in science and technology in Brazil. So this is one other aspect that characterizes our situation. We have uh, a low number of highly skilled personnel. We ha don't have many investigators per uh, population or for, or for workforce labor. And um, uh, we have not, uh, we have a, an imbalance in uh, the STEM areas are not really well uh, performing very well in Brazil. And we don't have um, mobility. So these are points that we have to take in, in account when we plan the f future of science and technology in Brazil. So the, uh, the national development strategy in this area is really strongly to invest in people, development of skills and competences needed to, um, to the full insertion of the knowledge-based uh, economy, uh, to focus on the national strategic challenges and engineering and other technological areas, and the strategic areas for uh, such a country like oil and gas, Brazil faces a, a big effort now. During a meeting with the uh, CEO of BG, uh, they, uh, he said that the big challenge for oil in Brazil is really people. It's not the oil anymore. I mean, it's just to have the, uh, enough people to really explore the sector um, uh, adequately. And uh, the other point that was also mentioned by the panel uh, before is the promotion of industrial uh, research and development in Brazil. Uh, it was also mentioned in the panel that Brazil uh, is, does not invest in uh, research and development uh, enough. But this is not really an uh, uh, aspect of the government. The government, in terms of the amount of money that is invested as a percentage of, uh, uh, of the economy, it's similar to other uh, countries. What's lacking in Brazil is really private investment. Is the industrial sector investing in science and technology to really uh, make uh, the difference? And this is one point that uh, it's, it's uh, critical for um, our development. So the idea was really to, um, 
in the Science uh, Without Borders program come in this uh, scenario that is necessary to change some of these aspects to really address adequately uh, what we need in the f future. So the idea was really to boost uh, Brazilian science, technology, innovation, and competitiveness through the expansion of international mobility. The plan was really to, to grant 100,000 fellowships in uh, four years, uh, 75,000 uh, financed by the government, and 25,000 financed by the uh, private sector. Uh, we have already 26,000 uh, fellowships granted by the private sector. It's uh, above the goal. <laughs> Uh, in this, this is an indication, a clear indication, that the private sector in Brazil is feeling the need of really uh, enhancing uh, capacity building in Brazil. It's necessary to invest on that. Last Friday, we were in a ceremony in, uh, in Sao Paulo where the banks, the private banks, and uh, the financial sector donated 6,500 uh, fellowships for the program. So, and uh, you don't see that uh, the program won't have a direct effect on the banks. <laughs> it's not really to, to train people for the banks. Is that because the banks felt that, I mean, for their uh, job uh, to progress well, it's necessary to have a healthy country, an economy that's growing. And for this, it's necessary to have uh, uh, good uh, 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 trained personnel. So uh, our goal is already 101,000, and we're not counting on that, the small, um, small contributions. I mean, these are just the big contributions. If you count everything, like uh, a company that uh, are donating uh, 500 fellowships, we're not, not even counting that in the number, because the numbers are already so big that uh, we're, I mean, uh, staying with uh, 101,000 fellows, uh, fellowships. But increasing the pres uh, presence of Brazilian history researchers and the students of various levels and uh, institutions of excellence uh, ever overseas, and increase the innovative expertise of personnel. This is where we're placing a, a strong emphasis on the program to expose the Brazilian students that go abroad to this kind of uh, very uh, close association between the academia and the industry research. This is one point, a strong point of the program, is really to uh, expose uh, young Brazilians to a reality that's not very common in Brazil so far, of having this collaboration between the academia and other uh, in the economic sectors. In uh, the priority areas, I'm not going to list, but uh, the main emphasis is really engineering and other technological areas and the natural sciences that support this, uh, these areas. In uh, health and biomedical sciences, and uh, oh, the list uh, is, is available, and we can uh, uh, go through that um, uh, in further links. But the program itself has two uh, big components. The larger component, of course, is really to uh, give uh, the Brazilians opportunities to go abroad and experience uh, uh, these in a different situation. And one uh, aspect of that that is totally new for uh, government support in Brazil is really the, to uh, support undergraduate students to go abroad and spend uh, periods of uh, 12 months during their uh, 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 courses. This is uh, similar to the efforts that uh, Europe mainly did with Erasmus and other kinds of, uh, of programs. It's really to expose uh, young uh, students to a different uh, uh, way of, uh, of uh, teaching and uh, to interact with other people and also to, to, to live in an, uh, another country. Brazil was, uh, in this aspect, in terms of uh, science and technology and education, uh, highly isolated. We are the only country in South America that speak Portuguese, so we don't have lots of interaction even with the neighbors. Uh, and we are uh, far away from uh, the North Hemisphere in terms of uh, sending people abroad for short periods of time to experience that during their education. So this is a, a change on that. It's really to, to put an emphasis on stimulating young individuals to, to have this experience. And our uh, goal is on, with this is besides the uh, personal advancement that, that these uh, fellows are going to uh, obtain, 
is also to impact in our universities. I mean, to expose a large numbers of Brazilians to different uh, models of education and also to uh, this interaction between uh, academia and the industry. And uh, then to when they come back to Brazil and uh, to push that also in their institutions in terms of uh, being in big numbers. If it was a small program, this would have this uh, impact on the local institution. So it's, it's necessary really to create a situation that people, many people are uh, dealing with uh, different faces, different uh, ways of, uh, of, of learning abroad. And uh, the more uh, traditional kind of uh, the program is really to uh, doctoral academic degrees abroad and also the uh, postdoctoral uh, possibilities. And so Brazil is funding not only uh, the uh, the fellows, uh, they, they are living expenses, but also health and uh, things like that. <laughs> and in some situations, uh, and of course, uh, the university fees uh, when uh, under negotiation, we are, I mean, uh, dealing with that also. And um, another component is that's not, in terms of numbers, are not very high, but it's very important uh, for Brazil, is really to attract young talents. The situation here is really to have people that go to Brazil in the areas of the program and uh, they're going to have support for uh, their living expenses there, I mean, uh, the salary and also for uh, uh, their research funds to really uh, tackle a project in collaboration with the Brazilian group. So the idea is that uh, these young investigators and uh, by, by Talking about young, we're not really putting a limit, an age limit on that. It's only a kind of a, a mid-career uh, kind of uh, investigator uh, that goes to Brazil and spends there um, two or three years, and uh, they receive support to do that. And after this period, knowing what's uh, doing science in Brazil, they will decide if they want to stay or not. I mean, it's uh, no uh, commitment farther than the, the two or three years to tackle a project. But of course. Uh, the local institution that are receiving these uh, 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 investigators are committed really to offer them uh, opportunities to stay. And uh, this uh, component of the program is dealt by the go federal government, but also with the local state funding agencies in Brazil. Uh, 25 of our, of our 27 states have state agencies that support research also uh, locally. And all these 25 uh, research agencies are involved in that. And in some states, they, uh, they are offering very good uh, investment in terms of the projects that are being dealt in Brazil and uh, very sizable uh, funds for the dealing with the project. So it's, it's uh, opportunities that uh, people should be aware of. And um, as for um, the um, more senior investigators, what we like, uh, we know that it's more difficult for a senior investigator to go to Brazil for long periods of time. So the idea here is uh, to really uh, stimulate a continuous collaboration between a foreign um, investigator, a senior investigator, with a local group. And uh, the, there is going also to tackle a project. It's a common project to be dealt by the foreign and the local group. It's not only to go there and make some uh, classes or things like that or participate in seminars, but it's really to supervise a project. So we finance a postdoctoral uh, individual that tackles a project in the uh, daily uh, aspects. And the foreign investigator goes uh, periodically uh, to Brazil two or three times a year for short uh, periods to interact with people there and also to supervise and review data and uh, make uh, comments <coughs> on uh, the uh, way the project is progressing. And uh, again, the uh, situation here is really to stimulate contact between these foreign uh, leaders and uh, Brazilian groups in order uh, for them to decide afterwards what they're going to do. I mean, if they're going to uh, maintain collaboration, they will seek for other kind of support and uh, other aspects like that. So uh, this is a kind of more technical thing. Maybe we can discuss that with individual uh, institutions uh, that are interested in their program, how we can really stimulate that. Uh, that they And I will... Uh, well, just to show you a little bit uh, how the program is now, uh, this is a system that we can really uh, follow, and this is opening the website of the program that we can follow where the fellows are. 
Each uh, dot is an institution where the program has at least one fellow. And if we uh, go to the, uh, and click on the uh, uh, blue dot, you open this uh, box where you can see, and this is an ex example of Davis that was uh, the first uh, University of California, uh, University of California, uh, where a system that we had uh, an agreement with. And uh, the program has already 73 uh, fellows there. And uh, if you click on one of these boxes below, the uh, blue boxes below, you can really have access to the fellows themselves. You can see who they are, what they are doing, and, uh, and you can uh, really have access to their CVs or send them a message, and, and you can really ta uh, track all where these uh, individuals are and who they are, who, uh, where they come from in Brazil, and uh, things like that. And this is only to show you that so far we have granted uh, 16,000 uh, fellowships in this uh, program. And uh, this is a, a distribution of uh, undergraduates and graduates and postgraduates among the areas of the program. And the big bars are engineering. So we are really focusing a lot. And the second group of bars that is farther in the left is really a uh, uh, biological area. So the program is really maintaining the focus in engineering, engineering and all the other areas. Uh, we are now, uh, uh, some areas are very low and we have really to deal with very specifically is with these areas and uh, increase the numbers. Of course, some of these numbers are not going to be very large anyway, like uh, drugs and uh, so the, the pr uh, prevention of uh, climate uh, disasters and things like that. So this is a small, a smaller area comparison with the engineering that we are talking about several areas uh, together. But I mean, we have really to deal uh, maintaining the focus also to increase the participation of uh, the other areas of the program. And this is the last slide that I'm going to show you, is that really that we are open to discussing specific, uh, specifically um, uh, arrangements for the program. Uh, this is one uh, uh, arrangement that we did with BG for stimulating oil and gas uh, sectors in Brazil. So uh, they, uh, we are choosing uh, in common uh, with BG 10 Brazilian departments to, uh, that are already investing on uh, oil and gas sector to really have a very strong investment on them. And uh, they choose uh, one or two universities abroad where they are going to make um, a strong uh, contact and also other departments to maintain some uh, diversity in the uh, capacity building of uh, the local department. So the idea here is that uh, by the end of the program, we have, we're going to have departments that are with very strong links abroad in terms of having good partners to maintain a collaboration after the, uh, after the end of the program. In this kind of situation and other situations, we are really open to discuss. I mean, it's not only a call and uh, putting people in good institutions. This is, of course, always good, but we can do better than that by uh, focusing and structuring the program. So these are really the last one, and I would like again to thank you for this, and uh, maybe we have some time for questions. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> How exciting for Brazilian students. Wonderful. So we, are, we have about six minutes for Q&A, maybe two or three questions. Okay, Daniel. A quick question regarding master programs in Brazil. I have a computer science PS degree from Brazil. I grew up in Brazil. And I saw my, my friends going to, uh, to pursue master and, and PhD degrees. But I, so I know exactly how it works there. I came to the US in 1991. I, my kids grew here. I saw my son going to USC, UCLA, graduating, and doing his master's degree there. He finished. I said, congratulations. Is that it? I mean, very quick to do master's degree in the U.S. It's just an extension of your uh, undergraduate. In Brazil, it's very hard. You have to go to two years of credits and then average. I, I don't know if it has changed. I don't know, but it's three to four years to get your master's degree. PhD, for example, I know that Stanford accepts in computer science a computer software as your thesis. Brazil does not accept your thesis as a software. So the question is, uh, and I heard a few years ago that the, the Ministry of Science and Technology was considering to adopt the U.S. model for the master program, but said, no, we are not going to change. I wonder if there has been any change in these regards. Well, in terms of um, the uh, 
master is uh, decreased, but it is still uh, two years in terms of uh, the duration of a master's uh, uh, program in Brazil as a mean. And um, uh, so, but one point there is that, uh, again, it's much more of the uh, universities than uh, the law. There's not any law in Brazil that uh, in, uh, hinders the university of adopting different systems. So this is one thing that we would like to impact with the program, is the culture, the university culture, because if you ask them which law in Brazil prohibits them to change their graduate uh, programs, there is no law to do that. It's only a uh, decision of the university itself. <laughs> so, Professor Manuel, a brilliant presentation. There are a lot of things that I was going to ask and then you target a lot of doubts that I think a lot of people have it here. I just have a couple questions. For example, um, what happens in my impression in Brazil, I work in academics here at Stanford, and one of the things is that seems like a lot of the biomedical masters and PhDs are done with kind of requirement to follow up with an academic career, not necessarily to follow a career in research. Uh, in Brazil. So my impression is this, how can we, um, it seems to me that a lot of PhDs are as well localized in a couple of institutions in the country. They're not really widespread, a lot of people in USP, UNIFESP or, or so. So my question is this, how would promote Ciencias Sem Fronteras to uh, increase participation on private sector? Not necessarily having these kids coming over here, uh, doing this to follow, um, to maybe not follow an academic career. And the second question is kind of linked to it. Is the program as well not only sending them here, but then trying to create the condition locally for them to, to work on whatever they, 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 they had in here, exposure in here? Yeah, uh, the, uh, we're really, I mean, uh, doing a lot of effort now in terms of creating the situation that uh, people that are returning after their experience abroad have similar opportunities of internship uh, in the industries and I think so we're I mean, doing that already with the Ministry of Science Technology and uh, the private sector in Brazil invested a lot in their program so they're also asking us uh, to do to structure with them the uh, way of system of uh, giving this kind of opportunities so I guess this is also a, a very important a way of uh, contribute. The, the program can contribute to uh, changes uh, things in science technology in Brazil. Is really to approximate to put in close contact the industry to and the academia. And we are doing that, so it's, it's really, I mean, what we're discussing now. And uh, also the, the program is already totally open uh, to people in private institutions, not only academic, but non-academic. As long as they are working in science and technology, we are not investing on people of the administration of the industry, but we are, I mean, people from any industry in Brazil can ask uh, for opportunities to uh, have capacity building abroad. And uh, so this is already open, and we had, uh, um, full uh, length discussion with them and uh, we're going to launch still this year another uh, model of fellowship that is more tailored for people outside the academia to also uh, use this opportunity of the program. Hi, uh, my name is Bernada and I have a question regarding, it's kind of similar but going back to academia. Uh, I've known a lot of friends who did their uh, PhDs here, and then when they were back, the the system to to be a professor at university can be very hard sometimes, and you have to wait until it's uh, published and things like that. So, are we doing anything in terms of maybe um, uh, just the, the 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 method of accepting uh, or uh, giving preference for people who are in this program to go back to the academia and have a position in universities? in Brazil? Well, this we cannot really uh, do, I mean, this is totally the, the uh, decision of uh, the departments in uh, the university. I mean, we, can do, we cannot do that as a program in terms of giving preference, but what we can do is uh, really uh, to stimulate and uh, all the uh, uh, employment in the federal government is frozen except for the educational system. Each university in Brazil is opening uh, positions uh, as long as they have uh, the, uh, the vacancies. So this is the only system that is open because, I mean, in the effort to control 
uh, during these uh, stiff times abroad uh, to control uh, uh, federal government expenditure. Uh, but the hiring is, uh, is frozen except for education. And so this is a, a thing that uh, in uh, the, uh, I don't know how to translate concursos, but I mean, the opening positions uh, at the universities is really, uh, is, is a continuous flux in Brazil. I mean, it's not as, uh, it used to be in a kind of espasms uh, of uh, different periods of time. Now it's totally uh, uh, continuous. So the situation changed uh, in this aspect. But of course, uh, we are also interested th that many of these people that the university is forming do not stay in the university. We are uh, looking forward to have lots of people having jobs uh, outside the university. I mean, uh, this is really the, uh, our challenge in terms of uh, the educational system in Brazil. It's not only to produce people for itself, but also to produce to the country as a whole. We have one more last question in the back, and this is going to be the last one. Okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'll tell you a, a little story about myself, and then I'll, I'll ask you a question. Uh, ten years ago, uh, I was an entrepreneur in Brazil, especially in Campinas, and I applied for the high uh, process in, in uh, CNPQ, and my company didn't die, uh, uh, because of this project, so thank you, thank you for for the initiative. Uh, probably you were not involved, but thank you uh, the entire government because believe it in on my idea and I made the research and I delivered the results at that time. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't continue the the, the, the research uh, because the second phase was not approved. But what I remember, uh, first of all. I'm, I'm happy because uh, I had this opportunity, but what I remember was that the bureaucracy was completely insane to apply for the program and to receive the money. So if I'm not wrong, I, I wait for one year. Since I started the project, the, 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 applying for the project, and finishing when I received the, the, the money to start the research, when I say one year here in Silicon Valley, we create billion dollars in one year. To be honest, Instagram did it in two years. So the entrepreneur, with this competition that we have here, we don't have this time. So what do you think or what you are doing or what you did, because I'm not aware uh, what we are doing now, uh, to uh, make the bureaucracy less uh, as a problem. Well, let's uh, first uh, clarify a little bit for the uh, people that may not know that that this is a program to uh, finance people to uh, do uh, search in uh, in the private sector. I mean, to finance people to go to the private sector. So the the Rai scheme, the Rai program. So this is uh, one thing that continues. And uh, well, you know, um, this is also mentioned in the panel before me that. Uh, Bureaucracy is a big problem still. I mean, um, and we um, progressed on that. I don't know when it was uh, uh, your uh, situation with high. Now we are working with a four-month uh, period for for give a decision and on that. And uh, in some areas that are more linked uh, with the industry, we are really, uh, I mean, uh, putting forward now. Uh, 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 now a new flux of decision at NPQ that we're going to give our decision after the situation is dealt outside. At, at NPQ we're going to give an answer in one month. So this is uh, the situation like it is now. It's working in four. The one is a program that we're, I mean, it's a flux that we're going to launch. We, we cannot uh, say anything about that one month or, uh, yet. But uh, the four months is uh, working. Uh, the system that is working now uh, only if there's any unexpected problem can be more than four months, but the usual decision is in four months now. So it progresses, but it is still not good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Manuel Barral Neto. So before we break for lunch, I, I thought we would uh, finish this morning session with uh, a younger person's perspective. We, we heard a lot of uh, seasoned professionals here uh, today, this morning, and now 
uh, I think it's going to be just fun to have uh, somebody young to give their perspective about the Brazil and why and what are their plans after they finish their school. For that, I invited Guilherme Lourdes, a student here at Stanford. Thank you, Guilherme. Thank you all very much. Um, is it working? Thank you, Margarita, for the for the opportunity to be here. Um, it's an honor to be among the distinguished uh, members of, of, of this podium. Um, I think the reason Margarita asked me to be here is because in my short professional career, I've encountered four um, environments. They were very different, but there was a prevailing theme where we always discussed and 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 talked about the difficulty uh, that we have in Brazil in finding the qualified people to see projects through, especially in engineering and science. Um, the first one was a multinational Swedish corporation, and I was an intern in Brazil, and we, we sort of felt this lack of trust uh, in the Brazilian engineering that I think is getting better now, but this was about four years ago. Um, I then worked in a startup here in in Silicon Valley uh, in the clean tech space. And when we were trying to start sort of a branch in Brazil, we couldn't see it through. Even though we had the financing for it, uh, somewhat arranged, we were very scared of the, of the lack of, of qualified personnel. And that was very difficult for me to understand. I then came to Stanford and I thought, okay, so all the great Brazilian engineers must be here, not in Brazil. Um, and I found out that even though the business school is about three or four times smaller than the Graduate School of Engineering. There are three to four more times Brazil, three or four Brazilian uh, times more Brazilians in business than in engineering. Um, and and then my last my last experience was investment banking at, at, for Latin America in New York at Goldman Sachs. And even there, we 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 felt this this as kind of a risk for for the country. Um, so in, in my sense. Engineering has a lot of catching up to do in Brazil, and that's why I think the Science Without Borders program is probably the best thing that could happen to the country right now. And I'd very much like to, to thank you and congratulate you for, for the initiative, the government. I think it's, it's, it's phenomenal, and uh, I've been here for six years now in, in the US, kind of going back and forth, but I, I wish it would come in my time. And, uh, Again, I, I know it's going to do so much good for so many young, bright uh, people and, and also for the country. So thank you. And, and then you are going to tell us why you plan to go back to Brazil after you finish aeronautic engineer. Yeah, because the opportunity is there. It's, 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 of course, it's where I belong. It's home. Uh, I can't live without my steak every Sunday. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and also because it, it, it's where I think there's room to grow. I think the talent is evident. Brazilians are, are, are very innovative in their own way. Uh, there are corporate examples of that. You look at Embraer, they built its own kind of university to fill the gap uh, for aeronautical engineers in particular. And also just kind of the way Brazilians have figured out things, it's becoming more structured. And for those of us that have been fortunate to have a US education, I think we can come back and help uh, build that up from, 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 essentially from the ground up. So. Obrigada. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all. Wish you. Much.